Filipito is out for the remainder of the season, a huge blow for the New York Rangers. He's been out since November 2nd with a suspected concussion. This is not his first head-related injury. Trocek has done a very good job on line two, but at the beginning of the season, Filipito was his team's second-line center. Drafted 21st overall in 2017, Filipito solidified himself as a top six forward on this hockey club. He's been by far the brightest spot of the New York Rangers rebuild. He was the beginning of the rebuild, and he was a huge part of why they got out of it. He's the third longest tenured New York Ranger. This is a huge blow. Now, number one priority is for him to get healthy as a human being, but this team is absolutely going to miss him. By far the brightest spot, in my opinion, for the Rangers rebuild. Rumors swirling around, ton of interest on Rangers Capo Caco, second overall pick in 2019. Plain and simple, just has not lived up to that offensive potential that the Rangers wanted. The Rangers now might be looking to explore options to getting rid of him. Right now would be the time. I'm not agreeing with this mindset of getting rid of Capo Caco. I mean, I'm not saying I'm against it either, but I do think right now would be the time to sell on Capo Caco. This might be the only time the Rangers have. I love the kid and I love his game. You know that. By the way, Chris Jury did not draft Capo Caco. It's not his player that he's trading away. I think he's done a very good job as, ho as holding Gordon's players, but I mean, I, I completely understand if there was a guy to move, it would be Caco right now. Now we can talk about some guys that the Rangers might be interested in. I want to start off with Elias Lindholm. He's been on the trade block for the last couple seasons. His game really exploded as a two-way forward with a really high offensive upside game when he got to Calgary. When he was in Carolina, really didn't have that two-way game. He was a good player. They got him the Cal they gave him the Calgary. Calgary turned him into a very good two-way player, had that very explosive offensive season. Hasn't really put up those numbers since, but he's still a very good player. Rangers could be potentially interested in him. They've apparently been interested in him for a little bit. I think Chris Shuri is definitely interested in him. He provides what the Rangers need in the top six, possibly provides some center depth as well. If you're Chris Jury and you're the New York Rangers and you're looking even for the future, which is something that they're going to need to look at this deadline because, let's face it, the last two deadlines they spent a lot didn't really retain from what they spent at the Doe's deadlines, and now you kind of don't want what you had five, six, seven seasons ago when you had to enter a rebuild because you sold off so many assets. You don't want, you don't want a revolving door. Look at the Dallas Stars. They've been very good for a really long time because they've been able to draft guys and they've been able to extend their window by drafting rangers should be able to do that they should not be selling off too many assets they need to be able to retain some if you're a chris jury and you want to be aggressive that's fine you want to get rid of a first rounder you want to get rid of capo caco that's fine you need to go out and get someone who can provide right now in the top six and possibly provide past this season that's my take on trade speculations i do want to talk about a couple guys that the rangers could be interested in and if they were to take a big swing, I did like Elias Lindholm more than anybody, and we really focused on him because he is more linked to the Rangers than anybody else. Frank Vitrano, Elias Lindholm. Could you imagine they trade Capo Caco for Jake Gensel? They try to convince Sidney Crosby, hey, this kid can feed you the pucks in the corners. Maybe keep your window open a couple more years. I don't know. I mean, there's rumors about Gensel leaving Pittsburgh. I would love Jake Gensel to possibly end up in New York. We've seen crazier trades happen. I know I'm out of my mind, but listen, a guy can dream. A guy can dream. Plus, I love Jake Gensel's game. He's won a cup. He's former 40-goal scorer, maybe even 50-goal scorer. I don't even remember. Definitely 40-goal guy. I mean, again, he's going to need a contract. If they want to take a big swing, they need to retain those guys. And they already have the history with Frank Vitrano. He does have that extra year. That's why I believe and love to get him more. He loves playing in New York, Frank Vitrano. He is mentioned so many times, still to this day. And New York is the best place to play. He loves playing in Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden is the best place to play. He has said it so many times before. They already have the history there. Chris Jury, I would not be surprised if he makes the move on Frank Vitrano. He belongs here. If there was any guy that belongs here in the league right now that's not on this team, Frank Vitrano belongs here. NHL All-Star Weekend in Toronto this weekend. They're going to have a draft for the four different teams, I believe, tomorrow night. I hope it does well. I'm going to watch it if I can, if I'm not doing anything else. If I'm not tuning in to Modern Family, great television show. The skills competition should be good. It's 12 All-Stars competing for points in eight events. And then they're going to accumulate points from those events. And they're going to take home a $1 million prize. One of those guys is taking home a $1 million. It's a very 
intense event. I will be watching the skills competition, which is Friday night at 7 o'clock. I'm definitely going to be watching that. The All-Star game is Saturday. Who knows? But the NHL skills competition should be a good one. It should be a really good one. You got some really good players. They're listed on the screen there. Should be a very, very, very intense competition, man. There's a million dollars on the line. I don't think there's been maybe a 12th player competition in NHL All-Star Game history where there's this much money on the line. Don't quote me on that. But should be intense. Should be really cool to see. Rangers don't play until Monday, so I'm not sure if we're going to talk again until then. But I appreciate you guys watching. Please leave a like down below if you did enjoy this video. Please let me know on your guys' comments and opinions about this week's New York Rangers news. Subscribe if you guys are brand new. Thank you so much once again for 10,000 subscribers. I really do appreciate it. All right, I'll see you guys later.